One day, I would love to play a game with you where we match tiny homes to the owner. I show you a picture of the owner and I show you pictures of tiny homes and you have to match them because I bet that nine times out of 10, you could match it. And that's one of the things that I love when people design and build homes for themselves. And this next beautiful, completely off-grid, single level tiny home is another one which is absolutely perfectly matched to its wonderful owner. Hi Linda, how are you? Great, great to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. And what a lovely little home you've got here. Yeah, yeah, she's pretty special. Bit of a passion project for me, definitely. Uh, yeah, came out of a 30 year relationship, realized where am I gonna live, what am I gonna do? And the most sensible thing to me was going tiny. I didn't want a mortgage, I didn't want flatmates, and I didn't want to live somewhere that was run down and horrible. And to have, you know, beautiful scenery around me, and this was the answer, really. Absolutely. And you are just in such a lovely spot here as well. Yeah, yeah, pretty blessed. I've got really good landlords. They look after me, and um, it's, you know, close to the main town, so I can just zip out, but then just come back here and feel, as you can hear, hear the cicadas, hear the birds, and, uh, yeah, feel rural. So, yeah, it's really good, both worlds, yeah. Yeah. And what was it that really attracted you to the idea of living in a tiny home? Other than being a tiny person and not liking housework? <laughs> I think uh, they just feel encompassing and it was cosy and I liked that whole thing. So I like being outdoors, I like going to gigs, I like being busy. And so the idea of having somewhere that I could just come back to that was, you know, easy care and could take it with me. Because, I mean, eventually when I retire and stuff, I want to be somewhere where there's bush. But, I mean, obviously working, that's not going to work. And I've always wanted to build, but I didn't have that build money. I didn't have buying land money. So this fitted my budget. Yeah. And you're on solar power with this home as well, aren't you? Fully off-grid, yeah. The only thing I have coming in is water. But the uh, solar does seem to run everything. I mean, I had the aircon running all day yesterday and it barely dropped off the hundreds. And the house just has such a great look as well. It's quite an unusual colour that you've chosen. Yeah, I wanted it to be soft and fit in the landscape. I wear a lot of black, but I didn't want black on my house. So it just made sense. I looked at a few different colours, but there's not actually a big selection with colour steel. So when I moved to Colour Steel, instead of the wood cladding, yeah, there was a few, and that was this one was, I guess, the winner. Yeah. And that's why I went for the soft grey as well, because white was just too stark. Yeah. And it does blend quite beautifully into the greenery surrounding as well. Yeah, yeah. And it was quite lucky that when I got the, the deck designed that they had the same sort of grey, and then obviously this freebie that I got recently all this matches as well. This giant umbrella here. <laughs> yeah, I was really lucky it was the right colour. It was just complete coincidence. So, yeah. yeah. So it all ties in nicely, which I, I quite like. So yeah. yeah. And I think this umbrella you've got is almost the same footprint as the tiny house. Yeah, absolutely. It's a beast. And I mean, obviously my deck's quite sizable as well. Yeah. But yeah, I wanted to be able to have that indoor outdoor flow. And because, I mean, obviously inside you've got selected, but I have a big group of friends and we like doing stuff. So it means that I can still come out and have a you know proper dinner party and games night. There's a little bit in my house too that's, around that type of thing that I've specially selected furniture and stuff to be able to allow for visitors, even though she is tiny. It's very important to have that entertaining space, isn't it? Yeah. And what size is the tiny house? It's 10 by 3. So it is a sizable design then? Yeah. I wanted that wider footprint because I know there's some of them like container houses and stuff that are that 2.6 or 2.4. Yeah. But I wanted to be able to have my bed the way so that I can look out the window so that extra width just makes all the difference. It makes all the difference, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It gives you so many more options in the design. Well, I am very excited to see the inside of the home. Can we take a look? Excellent, let's go. All right. Now this is such a beautifully styled home. Yeah, I've just put a lot of love and a lot of thought into sort of pretty much everything that's in here. Um, right down to the fact that I took out the back window so that I had space for art. But yeah, a lot of it, I quite liked the idea of, you know, different patterns and putting them together and having those different shapes and stuff like the herringbone floor and the shaker cabinets and then the VJ being vertical. And yeah, and just bringing through the blues and the pinks and the greens through the, they run through the whole house without being too 
overly matchy matchy. Yeah, absolutely. And just the overall aesthetic in here, it's quite an uplifting and light looking home, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I wanted. Light and bright, lots of color. You know, I, I love color and I kind of did things a bit backwards. Like one of the first things I bought for the house was actually these pillows. Right. <laughs> And then worked, you know, stuff back. The colour on the cupboards of my um, kitchen was actually inspired by my favourite plates that were my grandmother's through a crown lin. So there's kind of little funny touches all over the place of personal connection. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And so with this tiny house, you've chosen to go for a single level design. Yeah, absolutely. I've kind of looked at it as a long term plan. And, you know, instead of having to save for my retirement or all of this sort of stuff down the track, I wanted something that will move with me and that I'll be able to, you know, not have to go, oh, this isn't going to work. Also, I'm a bit blind and I could just see myself falling down the stairs at five o'clock in the morning when I go to make my coffee. I also liked the ceiling height. I liked the airiness, which you don't get with the mezzanines. So it was kind of a, a few things that I thought about really. There's no question about it. Having a single level design definitely helps the home to feel a lot more spacious. Yeah, absolutely. And I can always go and get a pod down the track if I decide, you know, that I want a spare room or a studio or whatever. I mean, this couch does fold out into a full bed. These ottomans obviously are loose, um, they've got storage in them, and there's other things in here that allow me to readjust the space for having people over. So yeah, it's just a matter of, I guess, I had to just think how I wanted to live and how best to suit that with the design of the house. This is a super comfortable looking couch. It looks like this thing could just swallow you up. Oh, it's, it's awesome. Like me and the cats just cuddle up on it, watch movies at night because that blind comes down like a screen. And I wanted to have a pull out bed that's comfortable for visitors, but also comfortable as a couch because often with, you know, the sofa beds, they're not very comfy. Whereas, yeah, this is awesome. I mean, I just love to lie around and read and it's perfect. I can just look out the window or at my fish. Yeah. Comfort. Multifunction is awesome, but if it's not comfortable, it's just a complete waste of time. Yeah, yeah. We used to have futon couch beds as our standard couches that folded flat. They were so uncomfortable. Yeah. And with being short, I have back issues. And so I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to scrimp on that. I'm buying a decent sofa. So, yeah. yeah. With being multifunction, one of the other things that I hunted out, which is not quite as beautiful as some of the other pieces, but this coffee table has got drawers on either side and the top actually lifts up and folds out into a full-size dining table. Right. So I can shuffle that shelf, drop that, and move the ottomans around. And then when my mates come around, if it's winter, we can still do games night. And I love how much of your home has been designed around entertaining and just making this a really good social space for you. Yeah, basically when, how do I live? And how can I, you know, work the space that's still going to allow that? So yeah, that was one of the things I considered was how can I have it so that it all works? And I love that you've got the fish tank in here as well. Yeah, they've traveled for me from my old place and uh, actually had to get them accounted in my account for my solar because they're of tropical. So uh, that was something that I made sure I had enough battery for. Not that I've actually run out of battery yet, so cross fingers. Yeah. There's something about watching fish that's just so relaxing. Yeah. See, at night time, you know, because as I said, I like to read, I'll often have these fairy lights, which I've left on since Christmas because they actually have such a nice warm glow. And I'll just sit here and read and just watch them. Yeah. Very, Lovely. very uh, peaceful. Yeah. It certainly is. And this kitchen design just looks so good. It's such a spacious looking kitchen. Yeah, that was really important to me. I like to cook and I've always wanted a beautiful kitchen and this was my opportunity to put all my ideas into one space. It's also very practical. There's actually quite a few mods that we did for A, my height, and uh, B, to have it really functional. And so how did you modify it for your height? There's pretty much nothing up the top. Uh, like I don't have a lot in the top cupboards because I should don't reach and I wanted to have more display space. So my pantry has a microwave in the middle shelf instead of it being you stand it up the top or up high. Uh, there's a few other pull out bits that are for my shortiness. So what height are you? Four foot ten. I can't remember if the counter may have been a little bit lower. Yeah, and obviously the cabinets were lowered, those top ones. We had to measure, it was sort of the minimum we could get away with with the space they had to allow for the gas stove. Yeah, abundant storage in this kitchen too. It looks like no space was wasted in here. No, absolutely not. And even with having to have the gas stove a certain amount out from the wall, it meant that we then utilised those skinny spaces that then were created by having to move the 
range hood as well. So the top one has got glasses and they fit perfectly. And then the bottom one, I've got my beautiful pull-out spice utensils and saucers. And even under the kickboards in the pantry, I've got storage for boards and heavy platters. So I don't pull them over my head. That is such a good design. And I love the way that you've done the colors in here. You've got the blue that really pops, the white that keeps everything very clean and open looking, and then it's all warmed up with these lovely timber accents. Yeah, I love wood and I wanted it to be quite natural. And also the walls, because I didn't actually ever think I'd have a white house. It's not really me, but I love it. And I think because I've got so much art, and stuff on display that it needed to have that to break it up mm. and that's why we only did the blue on the bottom was because it was just going to be too much if it was up the top as well yeah the breakfast bar is a nice addition as well yeah that folds down flat right yeah and those chairs actually fold up as well and they fit in the gap between the end of the breakfast bar and the kitchen cabinetry so again that can slide over these can move so that the, the bed can come out brilliant yeah or if i've got people over and i want to create a bit more walking space through to the kitchen same thing again just drops down and it's out of the way great to have those options yeah yeah and next door we have your bedroom can we have a look at that absolutely let's go all righty i really like this design Having such a spacious area to sleep is quite a luxury in a tiny home, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And again, with the having that high ceiling spent that I could put that heat pump in and it not take over the whole space. Yeah, so I've got lots of storage, lots of storage for all of my clothes and shoes. And you then, certainly do. How do you get up there, though? Uh, well, I used to stand on my bed, but I uh, recently purchased this little stool slash side <laughs> table so that I can uh, get up there. There's there's a few places I have to use a stool to get up to. And then I've got all under the bed as well. So like all my spare linen and that sort of stuff is under the bed in storage. And when we designed it, they made sure that there were things like the light switches right by my hand. I want to get up in the morning. and It's nice and cool in here with the tinted windows and because I've got mosquito mesh on there again which means that I can have the windows open and I don't get bitten to death same with the slider door means yeah. I can leave it open in summer and so quite like a lot of fresh air yeah and I like that you do have the door here as well because again it just really adds to the indoor outdoor flow of the home doesn't it yeah it means that it doesn't feel too enclosed I think if that was a solid wall or a smaller window it would, it would feel smaller in here yeah and then through that door there, I'm guessing we must have your bathroom. Absolutely. Can we check that out? Certainly. Okay. This is a very spacious bathroom you've got. Yeah, I wanted to have extra space to be able to dry laundry in here in winter. Yeah. So that's why the heat is here too. So it heats uh, my bedroom and this bathroom. Brilliant. You've got the washing machine there as well? Yeah, and it's a good height for me. I um, got them to jack it up and put a drawer where all my towels are stored underneath. And then my cupboard, it's got a plug in it for my vacuum cleaner and all my stuff all fits in there. And then of course there's extra storage under the vanity um, for things as well. Excellent. Yeah. Lots more plants and artwork in here as well. Yeah, I love my art and uh, I'm actually house-sitting a few plants at the moment. We were originally going to put the heat pump up there. Right. So now that we've moved it into there, it means I've got more space for more things. <laughs> Fair enough too. The plants do look good there. Yeah. And exquisite tile work in here. Yeah, I was really pleased with it. Um, originally, it was going to be a scale similar to what's in the kitchen. But when it turned up, it was quite a baby pink and I, I just didn't quite like it. So mm. um, my designer found those tiles with that changing tone and it just I just love it. Yeah, it's very nice. And especially the way that it's offset with that mirror, it just looks so good. Yeah, and my whole idea of things follows through in here with the, the curves and the lines. So obviously we've got shaker drawers again and with the brickwork look and then having the oval mirror and the oval basin and the rounded fronted shower just softens the space. Yeah, and you've chosen an incinerating toilet for the house. Yeah, the idea of a composting didn't really appeal to me, especially as, you know, when you're on rented land and stuff, it's like then, you know, what do you do with it, especially as I'm fairly suburban. And I liked the idea that it wouldn't matter where I went, I was already set up. And it's really easy, just, you know, once every two weeks, you just pull the thing out, get rid of the ash and chuck some water into steam cleaner and yeah, it's done. It's yeah, simple, easy and effective. It was expensive, but I think worth it. Yeah, especially here in an urban setting, yeah. I really understand your point about how it's just a much easier solution. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got a good size shower in here too? Yeah, proper full size shower. Um, I put the dome on so I don't have to have worry about any moisture. And yeah, that was important to me, have a decent shower. 
And luckily, of course, I am on mains water. I do have good pressure. And with the gas, it's instant hot water. So, yeah. Excellent. And so how long have you been living in the home now? Six months-ish. Yeah, I moved, the house moved here September. And then I was here two weeks and then went to Costa Rica for nearly a month. So, oh, nice. Yeah, so my house sitter enjoyed it um, for the <laughs> first month. So there's a couple more things that I want to do to finish it off. I need to get a generator in. My shed's already pre-wired, so that's just waiting on to ride in the country. And then I've got some paving being done at the end of my deck for the barbecue areas. And then that's pretty much it. So yeah. Great. Yeah. And so far, how are you finding tiny house life? I love it. It's the best decision I've ever made. Like, yeah, it really suits me. And yeah, I, I can't imagine not living here. I think having this place means I've got the freedom to just up and live. Like, I love to travel. I like to go out. So not having that mortgage, having an easy care, like my landlord does all the lawns and stuff. I can just lock up and go. For anybody wanting to come house sit, they love it because it's that whole quirk of, you know, being in the tiny with Linda with her weird toilet. And it gives them also a cool, you know, experience as well. Yeah, and for me, it's just easy. Yeah, no stress. And can we talk about what this home costs to build? She's a bit bougie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, she was the higher end. It was 235 And then with all the, the decks, you know, solar, all the extra stuff that I've done, heat pumps and that, I think it's about 280 Okay. Yeah. Yep. So the cost is definitely getting up there, but that does include a lot of really nice touches to the home. Yeah, and I mean, that included my shed and, you know, that sort of stuff. And it's just all the things that you need to have, really. I mean, there's not a space here to have the inverters and the batteries and, and then all my extra gear. So the yeah. shed was a necessity. Yeah. Nice to have anyway for extra storage, too. Oh, absolutely. And it's also got my washing line on the side because I don't want to put holes in my house. So Fair um, enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's my whole thing for everything is I'd rather do it properly and do it right the first time that's why my deck is movable so it comes to bits it's kit set so next time if I move I can just take it to bits and you know modify it and uh, yeah it won't matter where I go it'll still work yeah and especially because this is designed as a long-term home for you it is worth putting in that investment to make sure it's exactly what you want 100%. I mean, I've had people say to me, oh, what if you end up with somebody else down the track that's got a house? I was like, well, then it becomes a batch or, you know, you know, I can't see myself selling. So, yeah. Well, Linda, this really is the most beautiful home that you've created for yourself. I love how much of yourself and your character that you've poured into this home and just how well this space fits you. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Anytime. It's been great. I know I've said this before but one of the most special elements to me, seeing people design and build their own tiny homes is just how beautifully they're able to match the homes to their character. I love that Linda has got to make this place exactly as she likes it. I love that because she's short, she's been able to lower the height of everything. Somehow building a tiny home gives us an opportunity to customize a space that fits us just right. And this is another wonderful example of just that.